I'm TJ Nelson, N-E-L-S-E-N. <laughs> I wrote this book, Houseboat, Drugs, Government, and the Fourth Estate. And I hope you're going to rush right out and buy one. Then, uh, why did you write this book? Because uh, I've always felt truth was more useful than myths and spin and lies. Did you feel that there was a lot of that prior to you writing this book? It was kind of a one-sided presentation or representation, yes. This is a story about houseboats, drugs, government, and the fourth estate. There's also a good bit about me in it, but only because this story is drawn from my experience, my impressions, and my conclusions. This is not intended to be a complete history of houseboats. The information presented here is not the result of research, interviews, or a scholarly analysis of data, and I do not suggest it is balanced, complete, or fair to all those involved. It is simply about what I experienced and the way I saw it. What do you cover in the book? Uh, chronologically, it's the period from late 1959 until, uh, I believe it was July 10th, 19, 2012, when we started construction of the last improvements to the Walla Point Harbor. Some of the key characters or key agencies that really helped shape this story? Well, it was the people that lived here that shaped it, the ones who originally built boats and moved here as early as the, uh, actually prior to the Korean War, and then more specifically after Korea, when so many vessels became available on the surplus market barges, boats, landing crafts, etc., etc., and uh, they created the heart and soul of the community, of course, and then there was the interaction with government, County Marin principally, and then the BCDC after they were formed. What is the BCDC? Well, that's the Bay Conservation and Development Commission. Okay, and how did they fit into this picture? Well, uh, there's a huge expense. <laughs> And who were some of the, uh, the, the key individuals that, um, you, that shaped what took place here? Well, primarily Don Arquez, or Donlin Arquez. He uh, purchased his property from his father on a first deed of trust. Well, he loaned money on a first deed of trust so there'd be no inheritance tax. And when his father died, he foreclosed on it, and he became the owner of this land blocks and streets, which are an unusual phenomenon. As I understand, it's one of the few places in the United States where private individuals can loan, own underwater property. Okay, good. How did you become involved in all of this? Um, well, the county of Marin landed on us in the uh, 60s, middle 60s, late 60s, and for a variety of reasons which I covered in the book. And uh, I heard that Arquez was going to sell one block, block 227, which we are sitting on, to some of his old-time well-to-do tenants and let the county kick the rest of the people out because it would make the property more valuable for resale. And I went to see him about it, and uh, which I also describe in the book. And the upshot of it was that he told me, uh, after I told him that I thought the county would go along with any plan that would bring the property up to code because it would call solve their problem as well as his. So he told me, you do it, uh, which I hadn't intended or expected. Okay, very good. Um, 20,000 foot view. What were some of the, the biggest hurdles that you and this community faced to move forward to become a, uh, a legitimate permitted community? Uh, <clears throat> people within the community, uh, principally people that were involved in the drug culture who didn't want to see any changes. And, and why was that? Well, that would upset their scene. They had a good thing going. Mm -hmm. They weren't paying rent by and large. Uh, there was no 
uh, drug enforcement going on. It was kind of like the Wild West. Blue Angels. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing them. I was waiting for them to uh, pass on by. Okay, good. And uh, I know that the uh, the uh, media, local San Francisco media, played a big role in some of the challenges that this community faced, particularly you, in order to get this permitted? Yes. Um, the standard scenario was that it was the poor people versus the developers, which wasn't the case. And it, it was a... There's another term for that that's used currently in politics. But uh, it, it created a an excuse for people to come and fight, Promote, promoted it, and kept the fight going once it started. Mm -hmm. People get your book. Ah, well might you ask. Uh, book Depot in Mill Valley were the first people to take it, and they sold a bunch of them. It's also to a historical society in their ice house downtown, uh, local libraries, Copperfield Books in San Rafael, the Book Passage in Corner Madera, Diesel Books at the Larkspur Landing, Dogger Eared Books in Cas on the Castro, or in the Castro area, uh, Doran's Publishing Company, of course, the people that printed the book for me, which I had to pay for, obviously, and of course, Amazon.